Çok değerli bir oturumla yine karşınızda olacağız efendim bu bölümde. Bu kez işin başına döneceğiz. Sürdürülebilir ham maddeler bu oturumdaki başlığımız ve e, işin dediğimiz gibi en başından başlayarak olmazsa olmazına ham madde tarafına dönerek e, acaba bacalı sanayiden bu ARGE tarafına, araştırma geliştirme tarafına nasıl odaklanabiliriz, nasıl geçebiliriz? İşte onu sizlerle paylaşmaya çalışacağız. Çevreci çalışmalar için özellikle üretilen çalışmaların üzerine bir miktar daha odaklanmaya çalışacağız. Bu bölümde sürdürülebilir ham maddeler oturumunda moderatörümüz Sedef Uncu Akı olacak. Orta Anadolu direktörü Sedef Hanım'ı sahneye davet ediyorum. Alkışlarınızla efendim lütfen buyurun. Aynı zamanda Infinited Fiber CEO'su Petri Alava. Buyurun efendim. Business Finance Endüstrilerde Karbonsuzlaşma Programı Başkanı Marika Olaranta. Alkışlar efendim lütfen. Alkışlar ve sahneye davet edelim. Rui Fontuara Textile Exchange Elyaf Hammade Derer Strateji Lideri Hamuk ve Lif Bitkileri. Rui Bey yine sahneye davet ediyorum. Buyurun. Ve Kara Fiber Tekstil Yönetim Kurulu üyesi Yunus Kara'yı da yine sahneye davet ediyorum. Yunus Bey buyurun. Alkışlar. Ben sözü daha fazla uzatmayayım. Sürdürülebilir Yok, ham maddeler olsun. oturumu Thank için you. sözü moderatörümüze devrediyorum. Buyurun. Thank you. Thank you very much Barış. Um, well, this session is more about futuristic technologies. Uh, are you ready to listen what the future holds in front of us? Um, we talked about the world population a lot in the beginning sessions. Everybody mentioned about 8 billion people living in the world. And uh, I really would like to start with the question that humanity is facing today is, is it really possible to build, to feed, to shelter, to build a life for 8 billion people uh, that is both comfortable and sustainable. The pessimists say it's impossible, <laughs> right? Um, when you see the future scenarios, even in the movies, the, the scenery looks really desperate, cold. All its heroes were in dystopian clothes, uh, really uniform-like dresses and uh, they are displayed as cynical, lonely wolves moving around. And I really would like to ask, well, uh, if we really don't want to live in a future like that, we need to start building a future we want to live in. So today's discussion is really all uh, around this topic. If we want to really move por forward from the dystopian culture, if we really want to move our industry forward, we want to, we should build an optimism, a reinvention and a cooperation uh, between the future technologies and natural elements uh, in one setting. So to build that utopia, let me put it that way, we need future technologies. And today we will be hearing one of the future technologies from Petri Infinite Fibers. And we will be hearing about the uh, Finnish startup landscape and how Turkey and Finland can cooperate from Marika. And Rui is from Textile Exchange. I'm pretty sure uh, most of the people here knows the organization very well. And he'll be sharing again the future plans about Textile Exchange. Last but not least, Yunus is here, and uh, they have a recent investment, a Lyocell investment, in Turkey uh, in a responsible and sustainable manner, and he will be sharing uh, their experiences around uh, these technologies. So, as the first round, I would like you, from all of you, to introduce yourselves. A brief introduction, please. Marika? Hello all of you and thank you for the invite it's really a pleasure to be here today and most probably meet all of many of you also so my name is Marika Olaranta I'm working for Business Finland Business Finland is a government owned company and the role of the company is to fund the innovations and uh, trade emissions internationally 
Uh, my role in the company is to help these Finnish companies to find the potential and the meaningful customers for, for their sustainable textiles and uh, in the international context in order that they are able to pilot and, and scale up their innovations. On the other hand, also I'm uh, meeting the international customers on a weekly basis and I'm, I'm helping them to find the most suitable solution from Finland related to these topics, for example, for the textile industry. Thank you, Marika. Petri? Yes, hi everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Petri Alava and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Infinity Fiber Company. Um, instead of speaking for myself that much, maybe introducing briefly Infinity Fiber. Uh, Infinity Fiber is a fashion and textile technology company uh, with a mission to make circularity an everyday reality in, in textiles, in fashion for, for everyone. Uh, that means three things for us. Uh, one thing is that technically we need to be able to reach into such a level with the material, uh, with the fiber, that the consumer doesn't need to be making any compromise so that it's really easy to buy for consumers. You can buy the clothing, what, what you want, or what you want to wear, which looks nice and feels comfortable. Uh, secondly, it also means that on the longer term we want the, the technology also be rather inclusive than exclusive. And, and in practice, that means that, that within a reasonable time horizon, we need to be also reaching a, a very strong cost competitiveness. Because that's the only way that, that we, we can get the kind of mainstream solution of, of our technology. Uh, and thirdly, of course, it means that, that the, there, it, it has to be a very good business for, for the whole value chain, for, for the retailers and, and for, the, for the manufacturers. Uh, the problems we are solving uh, relates one, on the one hand side uh, the climate change, uh, sustainability. Uh, there has been a lot of, of talks about that, so let's forget that for a while. But the, the other issue is that, that we are really uh, solving the waste problem because the, uh, globally uh, equal to one truck of truckload of, of textile waste is being landfilled or incinerated every second. Uh, that can be seen as, as a problem. We rather see it as an opportunity. Uh, Ellen MacArthur Association was, uh, was calculating that annually we are losing a value of, of more than $100 billion. So why not to take, why not to take use of, of such, such a, a valuable resource? Uh, the, our solution is, is chemical recycling technology, uh, which can take in uh, uh, mixed materials, mixed colors, which we are in the process cleaning and then turning uh, into premium quality textile fibers, uh, which looks, and looks, natural, feel, looks and feels natural like cotton. And that's what, one of, of the key issues. Uh, the company has a long heritage. Uh, the development has been taking in Finland 40 years, uh, taken care of by, by very large industrial companies, by scientists. Uh, we took over the dev development in 2015, or the commercialization in 2015. Uh, have been working with two pilot factories since 2018, and now we are at, at the stage of, of building the first commercial scale factory to Finland with more than 400 million euro investment. Uh, and I think the kind of, of great ex example and evidence that the industry is and the retailers are really serious that we've been selling the capacity of, of, of the factory uh, with, with the 30,000 tons capacity uh, to the, the leading brands like Inditex, HM and so forth. So th those companies have been willing to sign long-term sourcing agreements with us uh, for years and years, being a one of, of, the, of the very strong signals that the industry is serious about this transition. But that's just, just the beginning. They say that it's, it's very nice. It's still a drop in the ocean. So now they are pushing us that how can we find an upscale even further? Because 30,000 tons is, is nothing in, in this industry. Thank you. Rui? Hi, um, my name is Rui Fontora. I work for Textile Exchange. I'm the fibers and materials strategy lead, mainly focused on cotton. Um, I joined the organization a long time ago. Before that, um, I was obvious um, working for brands and retailers as well, with like a lot of people here. So um, it's good to be here. It's my first day here. Let's, thank you for having me. Um, I have a couple of slides just on what the organization is. Um, we're going to take it through very quickly. But to, this year, Textile Exchange is celebrating 20 years. Um, the organization was initially Organic Exchange. Our CEO and co-founder, Larry Pepper, is the fifth generation of uh, cotton farmers. So there's a lot of um, connections within the organization, not just from her, but from other uh, of our leadership teams um, connected with cotton. 
Um, this is what we offer. A lot of the, the tools that we got, um, you know, reports. Um, we're working on um, other tools that we need we to offer. We got uh, a lot of materials. We're launching the impact incentives, which is a new tool that we're trying to uh, promote to generate um, a change and incentivize this change. Um, oops, sorry. Um, this is just actually our selling members, so around 110 plus uh, members. Um, a lot of them are brands and retailers, but we also have suppliers and producers. Um, we do have um, about 1,900. Um, I forgot what that one is, sorry. Uh, I can't really see it from here, apologies. Uh, but this is just a bit of the numbers that we got, and we got around plus 77 webinars on. Um, so um, we are the only organization uh, tracking uptake of preferred fibers and materials, and we use this data to deliver exclusive report to the industry. Um, the preferred fiber and materials report is coming up uh, this week. We have the organic cotton market report coming up next week. We also have a recycle uh, polyester report or challenge that we, we produce every year. And we have the 2025 sustainable cotton challenge that we released earlier this year. Our strategy, Climate Plus strategy, was launched in 2019 um, and we're working at Walter Long to deliver, which is our goal of reducing 45% greenhouse gas emissions um, by, on, within the textile industry by 2030. Uh, the plus means the focus that exists within the organization for data, and data focus around soil health, biodiversity, and water. Um, we have our mission to equip the industry with the tools that are required to make uh, the right decisions. Um, and our vision is to have a, a global textile industry that creates positive impact as, as they go along as they produce it. And obviously, we have our annual conference. Uh, we normally do one uh, year in the United States or the other side, and one year in Europe. This year is in Colorado in November. And thank you. Thank you, Rui. Uh, Yunus Bey? Hello, everyone. I'm Yunus Kara from Kara Holding. Uh, we are a family company. Uh, I'm the second generation and member of board. Uh, my responsibility is taking care of uh, our textile industry, including purchasing, sales, and sourcing new raw materials to make much more value-added products. Uh, we know by our customers if they need any specific items they will find from Kara Fiber. Uh, our textile journey started at 1989, and today we are one of the biggest integrated textile company in Turkey. We are giving uh, service to our customers with three types of spinning technology, and we produce 150 ton yarns in a day. Uh, at the same time, we have twisting, knitting house, uh, fiber and fiber dye house. We are also in non-woven and plastic industry. At the same time, uh, at 2019, we uh, started Lyocell project in Gaziantep. Our brand name is Ecocell. At first step, we start production with uh, 20,000 tons annually. In 2024, we will reach 50,000 tons annually. Our aim is to produce at 2030 100,000 tons annually with total investment cost is 400 million euros. Uh, we are the first at that industry who can make fiber from to dye fabric. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, thank you, Yunus. Uh, Marika, so Business Finland, can you tell more about the mission of Business Finland and how sustainable raw materials fits into this mission? So the mission is to keep the Finnish companies competitive in two years' time, five years' time, and. 10 years times and the funding those ground, groundbreaking technologies that can sort of like uh, enable those uh, because this development process takes a lot of time uh, even 10 years might be in some cases short time and uh, that's something that we have done during, uh, for the raw materials 
uh, through the examples of the Finnish companies who are present also today here, uh, I can give you a couple of the examples. So of course, the Unified Fiber Company, who is making uh, textile waste into new fibers, is something like thinking that we should sort of like uh, take more in other industries as well. And that is what we do in the metals and the plastics as well. But then also the Fortum is here, and they are developing a next generation biorefinery that is going to be utilized as agricultural waste mm -hmm. as a, uh, raw materials for textile textile industry. And not limit only to the textile fibers, which we have discussed a lot today, but there's also like uh, Nude Shield, who is providing uh, bio-based and biogradable uh, solutions to replace uh, toxic heavy metals in the textile treatments. And uh, as I mentioned, we've been, uh, and these are the companies that Business Finland has funded like uh, many years uh, already. And maybe we did not even know on that time that how relevant this will be, because we need to also be, there's a lack of uh, materials and the fibers and the raw materials, but also that we want to be sort of like a more independent also, and also respect the material that we have in our hands so we don't end up that to the landfill that we utilize and utilize it as many, as many times as possible. Food wipers are something that we can uh, utilize, for example, seven times before they are uh, end of the life cycle. Um, <coughs> those would be sort of like uh, to summarize. To summarize. Yeah. So what do you think, how can we cooperate, Turkey and Finland? Uh, in many ways. Uh, in Finland, these uh, innovations for the textile industry to be more sustainable, the, the innovation is they are based on the knowledge that we have in a bioeconomy, in a circular economy, and in the digitalization. But in Finland, we don't have this kind of like a textile industry as such that it, you have here. And uh, we definitely need a knowledge sharing across the value chains in order to speed up, in order to have the meaningful impact in the short term in the market, because that is something that the consumers want to have soon. And uh, then, of course, pilot the existing uh, innovations that we have already in order that they can be also scaled up in order then again to be sustainable for the consumers. But definitely also initiate new research projects that we could do then together and uh, also apply the EU funding to manage those projects. And we have already like a good examples with the two municipalities, one in, from Turkey and one from Finland. They are already sort of like a have an application in, so, no, so yeah, they are like a, uh, similar targets and the funding available, so many ways to cooperate. No, very good to hear that. You have the innovation, we can co-create, yes. and we have a strong sustainable manufacturing here in Turkey, yeah. so we can use the innovation and combine with the manufacturing and yes. really build the future that we yes. really want to live in together. Really nice, thank you. Uh, well, Petri, um, I really like how you define your company turns waste into a source of joy in your website and our dream is a future where the clothes we wear and all the products we use are made in balance <coughs> with nature, where renewing or what already exists is more valuable than producing what doesn't. I really like that quote. You mentioned what you have done uh, already, but what are the current challenges that you face and what do you see as a future challenge in the overall? You're now investing in the manufacturing as well. So could you please explain a little bit? Yeah. Um, probably we, we can always see things as a challenge or opportunities. I, I'd rather see them as opportunities. And I think the, the biggest opportunity what we have uh, uh, also so all together uh, is that the, the kind of demand for, for the new sustainable materials is much higher than, than, than we are even close <coughs> to be able to manufacture. So it, it's really the kind of availability issue what we are trying to solve. And, and there are, of course, many issues around that. Uh, one is, is uh, for example, related to expectation management. Uh, we are mostly working with the brands uh, who are very impatient. They rather have everything yesterday uh, rather than tomorrow. Uh, and and the, in that respect, I think the, the environment has improved a lot. 
Uh, I came to this industry in 2015 with having, without, any, without having any background in this industry. And at that time, it was still kind of expecting that everything what is coming new must be very, very cost-efficient, uh, cost, cost even cheaper than, than whatever exists today. Uh, and I think that in that respect, that the, the world has changed quite a bit, uh, whether there has been some, some NGOs who's been doing wonderful work or when the, the brands have been and retailers have been kind of getting used to work with innovations, they have learned that, that that's not, not the way the innovations are, are coming to the market. So the, uh, a good example of, of that is, is the, uh, our flagship factory project, uh, what we are now in the process of building to Finland. Uh, it, it was not that tough really to get signed those long-term off-take agreements with the brands with a, a nice premium. Uh, we are not kind of asking any cream premium, that, but the fact, fact is that when we are building a first commercial scale factory, it's still a subscale factory. So we don't have the full competitiveness in place. It's still a new technology. So uh, if you look at say cotton growing or viscose manufacturing, those have been existing for hundreds of years. So there has been also time for, for developing the competitiveness. And I think in that respect now, the, the, the brands do acknowledge that the world is different and, and say they today expect or what they communicate with us, uh, that they expect that the technologies are becoming more competitive within five to 10 years time horizon, which is much more realistic. So I think that that's a great signal from, from the industry. Uh, of course, our role in, in that, that is that, that we need to be taking seriously as, as uh, chemistry geeks, that, that we need to be finding all the ways to improve the competitiveness of the technology. And, and we are very heavily working on, on next generation technologies, uh, which are, are radically still decreasing the, the costs uh, and also environmental load. Uh, and then the scale matters. So uh, always when you are discussing about chemical processing, the, the scale is, is very important because the uh, by increasing the scale from, from our present 30,000 tons to say 120,000 tons or even higher, you are, are significantly decreasing the manufacturing cost. So we are confident that the uh, cost competitiveness is existing with, with the technology. Uh, then of, of course we need to be very actively working with the sustainability, so doing everything what we can just to minimize the, the, the ecological footprint. The, the, food, the footprint is excellent already with our factory in, in, in Finland, uh, but of course we need, want, to, want to be finding even new technologies to, to make it even, even better. Uh, then probably the joint uh, uh, challenge is that, that definitely the, the textile waste collection ecosystem needs to be developed. There, there needs to be new technologies so that you can scan uh, different materials, uh, make the sorting more, more efficient, uh, we haven't had that much problem on, on getting the textile waste needed for the flagship factory. We need about 36,000 tons of textile waste. That has not been the, the problem. But when we are looking, really getting in, into large scale, uh, that, that technology or that, say, that industry needs to be developed further. And there was a really excellent uh, report done by McKinsey in the, in the summertime, also highlighting that uh, at the end of the day, say 5, 10, 15 years time horizon, finding a combination of, of uh, um, polyester recycling and cellulosic fiber recycling like we are doing, that would be naturally the, the ultimate goal. Uh, today we can take in mixed materials. We have a limitation today that we can take in uh, textile waste, post-consumer textile waste, which contains 88% of cotton and the remainder can be uh, polyester, nylon, it can be elastane, it can be also mixed colors. But of course, in order to really kind of becoming a, a mainstream solution, we need to be even, even much better. And, and they, they would, uh, we would be very, very happy to work with the companies who are developing the polyester recycling, fiber to fiber recycling technology. So I think the, the, the opportunities there as, as the demand is, is massive. Uh, the brands really love to, to uh, for example, love our solution. They, they love very different solutions also. So the opportunity exists. Now we just need to be finding the way that how we are going to scale fast enough. Because at the end of the day, the, it's also about kind of time issues. So the faster we can scale this, these solutions or our kind of solutions, the faster we are learning and the, the faster we are becoming also cost competitive, and cost competitive. And at the end of the day, and naturally when the materials are available, it also starts making an impact on the markets. Yeah, very good. I also see the waste, waste collection part is really critical because the technology is already there. Okay, you're scaling up. 
but to be able to really collect. We're also discussing in Turkey, we have a West textile manufacturing landscape. Okay, we have pre-consumer waste in a sense, but to be able to reach the post-consumer waste that we create, we don't have a set uh, way of really collecting. Not like all the countries have that uh, system, so that should be definitely the, the, the step that we need to hurry, because it's, it's really promising to see these technologies who uses like waste as a new raw material. That's, that's amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. We Thank need you. to do something as like Turkish textile industry, textile apparel industry as well. Yeah. It, Thank it you for true. coming it up. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure that the kind of legislation will be helping there a lot. Uh, I've been also working in the past in the waste management uh, industry uh -huh. as a chairman of the board. And I was evidencing a, a, a development in Finland uh, where when I started being the chairman of the board, the landfilling rate in Finland was about 75%. Five years after, uh, the landfilling rate was 2%. Wow. And, and it, it wasn't because I was doing so excellent <laughs> job. It was because of their self forcing legislation from EU, mm -hmm. which was banning the landfilling of, of, of bio. Uh, degradable waste. Oh. So we just had to be finding the, the solutions in, in, in five years' time to make it happen. And, and the legislation, what, what's now, let's say, coming in, in Europe, forcing all the member states to uh, organize the separate textile waste collection will be a great thing. That, that will be accelerating the availability of, of, of waste and, and that's kind of, of keeping also at, at, at a low cost. Very nice. No, we need to also set the target and work backwards like each year what we should do, yeah, thank you. Um, Rui, we are closely following your reports, like making our strategies based on the, the facts that you're sharing. Very nice, good, thank good you for hear. that. But I just wonder how does textile exchange provide credibility? In that sense? And the credibility of these reports come from a, a lot of work that we do internally. Obviously we've got a, a team dedicated to it, but um, we also look at different um, data points for the source of the data that we publish. Um, you know, we have um, members of our team that are based uh, globally and they contact the producers or the producers uh, directly. Um, we then use also as well some of the organizations that have the standards or create the standards for the preferred materials that we produce. We get the data as well from them. Um, we connect with government um, uh, um, institutions in each region. And then it is a, lot of pro a long process of reconciliation, you know. And that's why these reports are produced annually, um, because it's quite a lot of detailed work that goes on to it. Um, and, you know, it's, um, you know, the organic cotton report is coming up now. The preferred fiber materials report is even more complex because it branch all the preferred uh, raw materials that we identify in the textile industry. So it's a lot of um, basically collection from different sources and then looking at that data, analyzing that data, reconciling that data, and then if, if the numbers do not really make sense to us, we go back and ask questions, and there are a couple of revisions, and that's why sometimes reporting is a bit late, but it's not intentional, is to make sure we have the most accurate data on, on those reports. But along that, we're also working on digitalizing a lot, a lot of the standards that we own, which hopefully in the future will be able to get that even more accurate than, than what it is today. No, thank you, because there are a lot of discussion around greenwashing right now. Exactly. And to be able to reach the right data is really important. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for, for really doing that. Um, we know that the starting point of textile exchange is better cotton future. So what is new for cotton in textile exchange? Do you have a, you have a preferred <laughs> matrix? I know fiber matrix. Yeah, so I think um, in one sentence, a uh, pathway to positive <coughs> impact. Um, mm. That's how we, we, we describe the direction of travel. I think um, there is four, uh, four levelers that we're using uh, to try to set direction of travel for cotton. It's been a big focus on that within the organization. Obviously, we heard from Lansing earlier on, you know, 24% of the, the, um, the industry is, they use cotton. Um, you know, second one after polyester, of course. Um, but we're looking, you know, um, generating and creating more reliable data, for sure. Uh, it's a work stream that we're working on quite quite strongly um, and also um, been able to provide better traceability systems within the cotton supply chain. This is massively important for us. Um, so, you know, the systems that we, we, we, we create, so the d tracker or E-Tracket as we call it, that's been going to launch quite soon. And there's a couple other things coming on the pipeline, but in terms of the, the, the pathway for a positive impact, 
We are continue to educate the industry on known negative impacts. We have a report coming up um, in December in terms of the chemical inputs within the cotton producing. Um, we are also looking at um, more regenerative and organic uh, farming systems. Uh, for sure, I think we launch our regenerative landscape analysis report uh, in February this year. That report is evolving. It's coming up to uh, phase two for next year, and we're going to try to learn more about you know, the, the pilots that we're seeing about regenerative globally. Um, you know, I'm here today, but I'm um, spending actually the whole week in Turkey. We connect actually with regenerative cotton um, projects within the region, which is very, very interesting, interesting to see. Um, and you know, we're trying to also you know, move the bar in terms of what sustainable and, and prefer means, you know, going from um, less bad to more good. I think that's one of the things that we're trying to focus on. And with that, we work with um, all the sustainable uh, cotton organizations globally, you know, trying to get them to, to, to drive in the same direction, trying to them to you know, make sure the importance of impact data to validate a lot of the best practices that we've been promoting, a lot of people in this room is aware of. I think a focus on basically on measuring the outcome, that's what we, we're trying to do. So it, in a nutshell, you know, we call it pathway to positive impact, but this is uh, pretty much what we do, you know, continue to educate, generate better data, and, and you know, promote and scaling up, like Peter was saying here, scaling up some of these initiatives that mm -hmm. exist, which we know have a positive impact, but it's still also important to be able to, to validate and measure the, the impact of these best practices that we, we advocate. No, great. It's great to mention that you came to see the regenerative cotton yeah. uh, applications. You will have, uh, the R have quite a few in the Asian side. Mm. Uh, I recently visited, uh, and one of them is uh, Sirktash Muzaffar Bey. He'll be also in another panel talking about the, the collaboration with uh, the Better Cotton Initiative yeah. Turkey and WWF. So, yeah, if you would like to listen to that, he'll be here. <laughs> Okay, uh, Yunus Bey, you have many good initiatives uh, in terms of sustainable production. Uh, could you please just mention briefly about what are you doing uh, in your company to support that? Okay, uh, we opened R&D Center at 2018 and we start journey. Uh, if any fiber producer want to develop something or introduce something, they offer us to make cooperation at our lines. Uh, we are really happy to make cooperation because it creates uh, new things. And then we recognize that uh, we started sustainable production. Uh, five years ago, our sustainable production was only 7%. Today, 60% of our production is uh, sustainable. And I believe that at 2025, we will reach at least 90% because uh, big players declare that the following years, uh, they won't use uh, any commercial raw materials anymore. Uh, they try to sell at their stores all sustainable products. Uh, uh, you mentioned before, yeah. we realized that uh, waste shouldn't be waste anymore. Mm -hmm. It becomes raw material. Uh, that's why we are separating all of our textile wastes and we deal with ready to wear factories to collect their wastes and we make them post-consumer and pre-consumer products. Our raw material range become 60% uh, sustainable products right now. Uh, once upon a time, producers like us only knows uh, conventional cotton and organic cotton. But today, I can count at our warehouse maybe eight type of cotton, four type of viscose, five type of uh, polyester products, biodegradable products, vegan pro products, etc., etc. And we believe that when the awareness increase, fiber variety will be much more in near future. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, as a closing remark, we have a uh, little time left. Marika, what do you think the role of the young generation and what should you do to support them as businessmen and going forward? Because we had a good discussion around how they see the future. So, if you can also share that discussion with us. Thank you. 
I would like to see them as role models for all of us because according to studies they are willing to pay more for sustainable options and also the sustainable uh, elements in the products are the critical ones when they do the purchasing decisions. That is something that we see in the studies, especially in the Europe. Uh, <coughs> So that we need to definitely cater for them because they also consume for the decades. Um, what I can do, quite big job to do for myself. So definitely cooperation is needed cross nation. So like a summarize also what is the, my role is to sort of like a take the existing uh, innovations in the production mode and scale them up in order to have the impact and the ready-made solution in the affordable price level still for the young people and um, tr giving a transparency evaluation is pretty pretty difficult like we have discussed today so giving the transparency through the data also for them that they can see the source of the raw material where it has come from and mm -hmm. where it has been proceeded because the social aspects are also important for them and also what is what is happening in the end of the life cycle so that kind of stories fascinates them mm -hmm. and that's I'm enabling with the Finnish nice. companies and the cooperation. Good, good, very nice, thank you. Petri, uh, you shared your future plans actually, but uh, what is next for Infina or Infinite Fiber to reduce the, the percentage of cotton in the waste that you can process or well, how do you see, like what are you working on in, in your mm. R&D right now? <laughs> yeah, the um, Infina Fiber has seen by the, the retailers as, as a true cotton alternative, as, as it le really looks and feels natural like cotton. Uh, and then as it's not really kind of recycled fiber, it's, it's re regenerated fiber, which means that we don't have for example, the, the, the challenges related to the fiber length. We are first making a filament fiber, which we are cutting then required fi uh, stable fiber length. So uh, from their perspective, uh, they really love that, that, that it's, it looks and feels like cotton. It's also highly versatile fiber. Uh, my, my shirt is made of, of Infina. Uh, there has been recently uh, quite a bit of, of uh, collections launched by our, our customers. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger was releasing t-shirts uh, last week. Adidas was releasing t-shirt uh, hoodie uh, products. Uh, there has been denim products released by um, HTM. Uh, Inditex has been coming what, with, with women dress. So, what they really like is, is that the, the fiber is so versatile um, that it can be used in a wide variety of, of applications. And, and that, that is out now then pushing us to, to really look for, for, for very fast way of, of upscaling. I think we probably have been uh, I say too shy so far uh, and now the brands are kicking us very hard on, on finding the, the, the faster way of, of, of upscaling. Our part of that is, is focusing very hard now parallel to build the factory, also now creating and engineering a high volume uh, production concept which will be finalized next year. At the same time also getting the new uh, technology generations ready and mature so that we can integrate those to the next factory concept. And then last but not least, we have the customers existing so we are tying them up. The, the brands also that, that uh, whoever is, is going to invest on the future manufacturing, there will be customers existing. and then. Then we are looking for, for the next location where, where Turkey could be a, a highly, highly interesting. Uh, we are evaluating also some, some other uh, countries in, in Southeast Asia, in, in Europe, say like Portugal, Spain, uh, space. But I think the, the strength of, of, of Turkey's textile industry is that, that you have very high technical level uh, on, on textile manufacturing. You are innovative. Uh, you are used to, do, used to make investments. Uh, you should be having also access to renewable energy, which is one of, of the key. So, Turkey is very, very high on, on our list of, of uh, prioritized countries where we could be together making a, a high volume production plant. Good, good, thank you. Rui, um, again, a feature question to you. I know that T is also taking some steps in digitalization and there is something called Global Fiber Impact Explorer tool. I also re read well, about it's, uh, that. Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a lot happening in the organization. I think, you know, um, since we, we launched our Climate Plus strategies, we realized there's a 
big gaps in the industry in terms of the data that we need to validate some of the things that we wanted to do, some of the things that industry wanted to do. So, you know, over the GFI that you mentioned, um, we're also launching a geospatial um, system data, so we can have track uh, directly to the, the farm um, on a specific location in the world. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we've got our tracking system, which um, is definitely going to improve the traceability in the cotton supply chain in particular. And obviously, we're not doing this alone. We don't do anything alone. And it's a lot of collaboration with the certification bodies to be able to access that data and make that data available to brands and retailers. Um, uh, the concept of LCA Plus, um, so we, we're trying to go beyond um, LCA. We're trying to also use a lot of the um, all the LCAs that will exist, what we call by LCI, but we're also trying to look at um, specific metric data on some of the key areas that we identify as important to, to deliver climate plus strategy, which is soil health, uh, water, and biodiversity. And specifically on soil health is one of them. There's a lot of focus going on at the moment because they're not just related to cotton, they also related to, to animal fibers. So it's a big focus on that at the moment. Um, we're looking at our standards, unified standards, we call it. Um, all of our seven standards, if I'm not wrong, and the numbers don't, don't fail me uh, anymore today. Um, we wanted to have a, the, all the seven standards are based on our chain of custody. All of that is uh, in the center of every single standard that we have. We want to harmonize that and create a system where we can have all those the standards available rather than having and with one single system for each one of the standards. So making things easier and accessible to brands and retailers. Um, and finally, which we're hopefully going to launch by the end of this year, which we call a shared measured system. So mm -hmm. it's a um, obviously we know that the way the data collected in the textile industry comes in many different ways and forms. It's very difficult to analyze it, reconcile it, and make some sense out of it. We're trying to create a platform where we, that data is, is collected in a more standardized and harmonized way, so it's for easier access and for easy to use for brands and retailers. So that's the, one of the biggest ones we're trying to achieve, obviously, is a lot of the components of the other systems that I mentioned earlier that come into, into this, what we call SMS, or system management system. Very nice. You have a huge amount of data, probably, <laughs> exactly. collecting from like everywhere around the world. <laughs> exactly. So it's nice to hear that it's going to be useful for us as well. Yeah, uh, I think I think it's important. I think you know, as I said earlier, you know, um, we know what and a lot of people know what the best practice is. You know, um, if you talk to a farmer, you know what's best for your soil. But in order to validate that, we need data and we need systems that that provide. Uh, provide that data to then we can push that upstream and, and be able to show the benefits of some of the good things that already happen. You know, the regenerative landscape analysis report is nothing new. Regenerative exist, existed, you know, our great grandfathers created. I think what we're trying to do is make sure we adapt that to every region in a way that actually generate positive impact. Okay, thank you. Yuspe, uh, final remarks. I know you, you made a, a renewable energy investment yeah. in your plan. And you have targets, sustainability targets, to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, what is next for Cara Fiber? Uh, at first, I would like to present EcoCell a little bit. Uh, we get a very sustainable production uh, journey at 2016. During that period, tendency on sustainable products growing day by day. Uh, we have recognized that the fashion trend will be sustainable. Also, all kind of manufacturing methods must be the best for the environment. We know that there's only one world, just one planet, and it should be virgin as uh, 1,000 years ago. Hence, we couldn't sit back, uh, and we make lots of research about all kind of fibers due to extremely specialties of lyocell. So we analyzed that lyocell production was limited, therefore, EcoCell brand was born. At the world, we are the sixth country uh, which produces lyocell fiber. EcoCell is fully uh, sustainable man-made cellulosic fiber. The raw material of uh, this fiber is coming from uh, ancient and endangered forests. But the difference from other man-made fibers is we are using organic solvents and 99.6 uh, point recover at the production as a solvent and water. So re you recycle everything. Almost. Yeah, we recycle it. Mm -hmm. It's really sustainable product. At this factory, uh, we don't need 
gets uh, environmental impact assessment report. I mean, this product doesn't give harm for environment, uh, less water consumption, less pollution, less chemi chemical consumption, much more efficiency. Carbon level of EcoCell is uh, close to zero point. We are keep developing something new with EcoCell, and we believe that some of our trials break a new ground. Uh, we are also aware of Paris climate agreements. Our carbon footprint was measured at 2021. We know that we should decrease our uh, carbon footprint 50% until 2030. First step, we make an investment uh, for green energy. We use green financial resources uh, to make uh, 27 megawatts solar energy power to our uh, roofs. Uh, it means that 25% of our consumption coming from green energy. Mm -hmm. The second step, we decrease our natural gas consumption. We substitute with biomass energy. For dying house, we save 70%. For XL plants, we save 35%. It means that overall 42% uh, saving at our factories. We make some R&D to decrease our water consumption at our dye house, and our aim is to decrease 15% end of uh, 24, 2024. Until 2027, our aim is to renew our old technologies. While we are focusing on new investment, we should also consider on next generation. Uh, by the way, we are sure that EcoCell will be a good opportunity to decrease carbon footprints, especially for regional suppliers, because of transportation costs. No, thank you. Yeah. It's good to hear that yeah. you have a re target in front of you and you're working towards that target uh, with, with an action plan. Really nice to hear that. Well, it's all about the people who are making change, who are collaborating together to use different technologies and supporting the system with the data. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and let's continue to create the future we want to live in together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Değerli konuklarımıza çok teşekkürler. Sahnede bir miktar daha misafir edelim. Hediyelerini takdim etmek üzere arkadaşlarımı da sahneye davet ediyorum. Bu bölümde sürdürülebilir ham maddeleri konuştuk. Hediyelerini vermek üzere e, Şayın Şafak Kıpık Bey'i TKSHT yönetim kurulu üyesini sahneye alalım efendim. Buyurun. Değerli konuklarımıza bir alkış rica edelim lütfen. Çok teşekkürler bu güzel okuyun için. Moderatörümüze de teşekkür ediyoruz.